Hey, Divas. So today, Friday Top 5 is everything you need to know about distinguishing the types of oils. Now, I'm going to type all of that. It'll probably just be like five oil things or five things you need to know about oil. Nevertheless, let's get right into it. Number five. No. Let's go the other word today. Number one. Between the, the first thing you need to know about oil is the difference between a natural oil and a synthetic oil or a man made oil. Natural oils are oils that are naturally found in the earth. There are four main sources, although um, man has figured out how to squeeze oil out of more, but there are four main sources where natural oils come from. Number one, fruits. Number two, flowers. Number three, vegetables. Number four, nuts. Oh, well, let's just put five in there. And number five, herbs. So you have five natural sources of oil. And the way the oil is extracted from the source, um, is it, it happens by different methods, quite frankly. They can beat it out. They can crush it. They can pound it. They can, um, they can use heat to extract it. Um, there are many ways that people go about um, extracting oil from the source. My favorite way of getting oil out, and the most natural way in my opinion, is what they call cold press, meaning they don't use heat to remove the oil from its source and so that um, it doesn't heat up and um, potentially damage or destroy the, the essence of what is in the synthetic oil. Synthetic oils place. are um, just like synthetic fabric. It's like the polyester of oil. It is man-made. It comes from any source um, generally that is not vegetable derived. And so it can be a combination of things. It can be um, like petroleum oil. Another example of synthetic oil would be mineral oil. Mineral oil um, <laughs> has been used kind of as a drug and um, it's also known as fleet oil and what it was um, one of the main purposes is for um, helping people go you know what I mean go and um, what it generally does is the person takes mineral oil as a um, um, like a drug or um, yeah it's a drug I guess that's what it is and basically um, once it's inside the stomach, it coats the intestine. And so um, the coating of the intestine stops the water from being absorbed into the body, which allows the stool to swell and allows you to better be able to go. And it allows it to be able to go a little more, pass through a little better because it coated. And so now that I'm through that whole um, uncomfortable conversation. I feel like I'm having to talk with my team. Um, not <laughs> now that I'm through that. I told y'all my caffeinated, right? Okay, so now that you know you know what mineral oil is used for, you can probably parallel why or segue into why it's gonna not be helpful for you to put anything with mineral oil in your hair because we know that the best thing for our hair is water. We need water to get in. Well, if you have anything with mineral oil in it, and you put that on your hair, guess what's not getting in? Yep, that water. So that's just another example of synthetic oil. Moving on to um, your fragrance. Number oils. two, the uh, second thing you need to know about oils is the different types of oils. So I'm going to do the, the next three together, but they're going to be two, three, and four. Number two, the first oil you need to know about is an essential oil. And I've seen a lot of recipes online where they tell people put in an essential oil when you're making like your shea butter or your flaxseed gel. And um, you see them just kind of like pouring it in. And it's really um, haphazard that people are using essential oils. If you read your bottle, usually essential oils come in um, bottles like this. And they're generally dark. This is um, essential rapeseed oil. This is a pretty big. And they're pretty expensive compared to some other oils, like the oils we're going to talk about. But the reason why these are 
essential oils is because no other oil has been added to it. It has literally been pressed and pressed and pressed and pressed and every squeeze has, every drop has been squeezed out of just that source and put into a box. So there's no other oils to water it down, so to speak. And so generally these oils tend to be in smaller quantity and they tend to be more expensive because they're highly potent, they're concentrated. As a result, many essential oils will have on the label um, not to use it directly on the skin or not to um, ingest it because um, even though it won't kill you, there's some damaging things it could do you because it is so strong and so potent. You gotta remember, it's the essence of whatever it was extracted from. And um, I get excited when I talk about essential oils because being a Christian, I've actually taught this as a message and um, it just brings back all these um, spiritual um, symbols for me. So if um, I seem a little excited about talking about oils, it's because it's the first assignment that I've ever had and the first message I ever taught. Okay, so let's go on to number three. The third thing you need to know is a carrier oil. If you want to use an essential oil, even though you have all the, um, the warning labels, but you know you've researched it and um, Say you know your hair loves grapeseed oil and you want all the benefits from it, what you can do is you can dilute it down without changing the properties. And what you use is a carrier oil. Carrier oils usually come in way bigger containers. They're just naturally um, able to dilute down other oils without changing their properties. Um, like olive oil. Olive oil is probably one of the best carrier oils. That's why it's used to make so many things. That's why it's used for soap. That's why you, it's used for an astringent. That's why it's used for medicinal, medis, medis, medicinal. I told you I was uncaffeinated. Medicinal reasons because it's such a versatile oil. Carrier oils tend to be way more versatile and way more um, user friendly as far as for your skin. You could put it directly on your skin. You could put it directly in your hair. Um, generally, most of them are good. They absorb. But you can dilute, you can use this oil to dilute this oil, and this oil will not change the properties, the nutrients, and all the beneficial things of what is in the essence of your essential oil. So that's why in my recipes, when you use when you do them, I always say use a carrier oil along with your essential oils so that you don't risk getting irritation or breaking out or having some kind of harmful effect. Some of these can even affect you internally if you're using them too much on your skin because you're absorbing them into your body. So you just need to be careful and, and, and be educated. And then uh, cook on, sister, cook home. Okay? The third oil that I am going to talk about is fragrant oil. What is an oil without the smell? I don't care how good a product works. Um, take Tresemme Naturals, even though it's not uh, a natural product. Take Tresemme Naturals. How many of us have complained about the smell? We love the slip. We love the price. We love the amount you get in the container. But that irritating, god-awful, earthy, natural, whatever synthetic smell they have, it just annoys us. Fragrance oil is what gives um, basically the scent to a product. And now fragrance oil um, can be synthetic or it can be natural. If you get a natural fragrant oil, it's going to cost you a little bit more because basically it's an essence oil with a little bit of the, I'm sorry, an essential oil with a little bit of carrier oil, but they allow it to sit and sit and sit and sit and sit and sit until that fragrance um, just, is just really potent and develops and then it becomes a fragrant oil. Versus a man-made, this is not going to necessarily have a it natural will source. Mimic the smell of um, your fra favorite fragrance. Does that make sense? So it will, um, it is how man has captured by using um, non natural oils to um, like synthetic, sometimes it could be alcohol, sometimes I don't know what all they use because usually with fragrant oil, they don't have to disclose what they're using to make it to the FDA. And so if you buy fragrant oils, you'll notice a lot of times there's no ingredient list on it. Um, and if you look on some of your other products, it'll just say, and fragrant oil. 
So we don't know exactly what kind of things the cosmetic industry is using to to produce fragrant oil. But do know that if it's man-made, um, it will be um, it'll be cheaper. You'll get more, and it'll have a longer shelf life because it'll have some kind of preservative in it. A lot of the fragrant oils too come from flowers. And um, as I was doing my research, I found that a lot of those flowers and things are being depleted as we make more and more perfume and we're consuming more. So some of that, is, some of that for me using synthetic fragrant oil is just personal. So it's really up to you. How much do you want to spend versus um, how much do you want to use up in the world? Do you want to see the flower? Do you want to smell like the flower? It's, it's, it's personal. Moving right along, the number five, the, the fifth thing you need to know, number five, is there is a difference between food grade oil and cosmetic grade oil okay food grade oil you can eat cosmetic grade oil you may not eat um, food grade oil has usually been um, cold processed it has been diluted and it's from a source that we can normally eat anyway without having harmful effects on us such as coconut oil um, and it's been um, through some kind of straining process or cleansing process and perhaps it has not been bleached so it's okay for you to ingest it versus cosmetic grade oil um, in its manufacturing it may have went through a different kind of purification process it may be very strong like your essential oils they're generally not cosmetic grade uh, I mean they're generally not food grade if you're getting them at certain stores you have to be careful when you're buying your oils and where you're getting them from and really read your labels to determine if this is something that's edible um, and or if this is something that's not edible generally if it's edible it's probably diluted um, or it may be um, extracted using heat versus the cold process it may have went through a heating process or um, the heating process is similar like to pasteurization it's the difference between getting pasteurized milk versus um, non-pasteurized milk. It doesn't go through that heating process where the temperature is brought up. A perfect example of that would be honey. You can get honey that is straight from the honeycomb. It has the bits and the pieces in it. And then you have that honey um, that is not raw, but it has been processed. It has been through a straining process and a cleansing process. And it has that really clean look. There's no bits, there's no pieces, there's no droppings, et cetera, et cetera. So, you really want to start reading your labels so that you know what you're using, what you're putting in your hair. And that way, as an informed diva, uh, excuse me, an informed curl diva, um, because the only thing diva is the curls, uh, you will know what you're putting in your hair and determine things like, why is my hair dry? Essential oils will dry your hair out. So that's why you have to dilute them. Now that you're educated and empowered, you can... Um, start gauging what ratio to use and which ratio is your hair like and what smells you can control your smells and you can determine okay this is synthetic and you'll read your labels and say this is mineral oil this is coating my hair that's why I have buildup that's why these balls are at the end so I hope that today's Friday top five has been an informative empowering experience I want you guys to have a blessed weekend Thank you.